in our home from underground tank to fill water level in overhead tank we normally use motor of half hp now if we want to turn on this half hp motor then what we do we connect cable of motor with socket and by turning on switch we turn on motor and by turning off switch motor also turn off in your home also if connection of motor is done like this and with that connection you want to do connection of float switch also then how to do connection of float switch i am going to explain you through this video first of all let me tell you why we use this kind of float switch by using this float switch water tank in our home we can turn on and off motor as per the water level in tank similarly for underground tank in your home for controlling water level in that tank you need to use another float switch it means for overhead tank we are going to use one float switch and for underground tank also we are going to use one separate float switch now these two float switch i have how to connect these float switch directly with motor let's understand this if you want to connect float switch with motor then always keep one thing in your mind that float switch you have power supply which flows from float switch that must always be neutral power supply do not let phase supply to flow in this if you flow phase supply from this then there is no problem but if somehow float switch got punctured then little current may flow in water so always try that through float switch you must do controlling of neutral power supply so here to turn on this motor i use this socket here when i turn on switch motor get turned on on turning of switch motor get turned off now i will open this neutral supply wire from here after opening this i will do the connection of this float switch how to do it let's understand so here i opened the circuit for starting motor i use this two pin socket there may be a three pin socket used in your home you just have to see which one is neutral pin this neutral pin here wire which is connected with this neutral pin you have to remove this wire i removed this wire from here now at the same point where wire was connected before you have to connect wire of float switch there how to connect let's understand this in this cable of the float switch you will find total 3 wires you have to do identification of these 3 wires that in which one you have to give input power supply and through which one you will get output power supply so for identification simply what you have to do in this multimeter select the continuity position after selecting continuity position with this wire of cable connect the probe after connecting we have to check this float switch by moving upside and downside right now we are not getting any continuity so i am interchanging the wires here when float switch is downwards continuity is there on moving upwards there is no continuity on downwards there is continuity when upwards no continuity now in this float switch we can see if float switch is heading down then in this condition continuity will be there it means when float switch heads down power supply flows forward and when float switch heads upward continuity or power supply will be stopped we want this only that if we place this float switch in our overhead tank and in this condition when water level goes low then float switch will head downwards and when float switch goes in this position then in this condition motor must turn on and when float switch heads upwards then motor must turn off so we have to operate this float switch two times it means we have to use blue and yellow wire here in this float switch take this blue wire and with the pin from which we removed motor wire before with this same pin connect this wire here we don't have to use brown wire so i am cutting this after cutting this put the insulation tape now second wire of this float switch will be connected directly with motor If you want to do connection of only one float switch then simply provide incoming power supply to this float switch and output power supply which you will get connect it with motor I am showing you this through temporary connection so I connected this wire with this now this switchboard I have with this switchboard I am connecting this plug top right now I did temporary connection so don't try like this now I am turning on switch you can see motor is off right now Now if i put this float switch heading downwards then you can see motor is turned on on putting float switch heading upwards motor turned off it means in this connection which i told you if float switch is heading upward then in this condition motor will remain off and the moment float switch head downwards i mean when water tank goes empty then at that time motor will turn on when water tank is full motor turn off okay so you understood this much
Now after this one more thing is there let's understand. Now if you want that along with overhead tank water level of underground tank must also need to be controlled then for this you have to use a separate float switch. In this second float switch also you will get total 3 wires and for these 3 wires also you have to do identification. In the previous float switch colors of wire were yellow, brown and blue but in this float switch red, black and green wire is provided. In both the float switch color coding is different so I always explain you by testing. Through testing only you are going to do identification of wire. What you have to do simply is for this second float switch first do the identification of wire. For identification put multimeter in continuity position. After this connect the probe with wire for testing. When float switch heads upward we must get continuity. On downwards continuity is gone. When it is upwards continuity is there when downwards it is gone. It means if I place this float switch in underground tank then in this condition if water level in tank is full then in this condition our motor must turn on. But when water level in underground tank goes low then in this condition our motor must not turn on. Now we will understand how to connect both these float switch. What you have to do simply is these two float switch connect both these float switch in series. It means in overhead tank float switch which is installed you have to connect this with float switch of underground tank and that also in series. Do the connection in series your connection will be perfect. So what I will do wires of this float switch I mean this second wire yellow one we will connect this wire with this float switch. When I did the identification of wire I get to know that for underground tank I have to use red wire and green wire. So take the green wire and with this yellow wire here connect this wire. Now to this float switch power supply will go from here in return goes to this wire. Now from here it goes to another float switch. Now in return power supply which comes to red wire we have to connect this with motor. It means to turn on this motor we are using this red wire. So I am connecting this wire with wire of motor. Now I am putting tape over all the joints so that there won't be any short circuit. Now what I will do I am connecting this plug top with power socket. So I connected this plug top with socket. When I turn on the switch you can see motor is off now. If we want to turn on this motor then for this we have two conditions. First condition is water level of underground tank must be full. If water level is full in underground tank then this float switch will be heading upwards like this. After this water level of overhead tank must be low then only motor will turn on. If water level in overhead tank is low then float switch will be heading downwards. When it is downwards you can see motor is turned on. If water level of overhead tank becomes full float switch will be heading upwards and motor will turn off. When water level goes low in overhead tank motor turn on when tank is full motor turn off. Now if water level of overhead tank is low and motor is on and in this condition if water level in underground tank goes low I mean less water is there then in this condition also motor will turn off. You can see water level in overhead tank is low but due to low water level in underground tank motor is in off condition. When water level becomes full in underground tank motor will again turn on because water level in overhead tank is low. So I hope this concept is clear to you now that how water pump in our home can be turned on and off according to water level. Friends I hope you like this video. If you like this video give like on my video. If you are new to the channel subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching this video.